It's a pleasure and privilege to present the RC SK5, the new Skahoy controller made exclusively for Canon. We are very proud of the result in every way. And this PDC controller is absolutely perfect for the simple needs and it's perfect for the complex jobs. It supports all Canon XC protocol cameras mixed in any way you like. And it features Skahoy's professional components such as the Hall Effect joystick, the zoom rocker, the dedicated knobs and the legendary four-way buttons. It has 20 control sets, pages in the menu, and you can even add, remove and customize these pages using Skahoy's technology. It has been designed and optimized in collaboration with Canon, so it makes the absolutely most out of your Canon XC protocol cameras. In this video, I will introduce the features of the panel to you, but with Skahoy technology inside, you can also be sure there are potentials beyond. For example, in another video, I'll introduce the Frameshot Pro Red Edition that will provide color thumbnails of preset positions for the RC SK5. And I will also introduce the Pro License, which will unlock RC SK5 to be fully integrated with cameras and video switches from other manufacturers. Let's take a look at the product and the first thing we want to do is basically to add cameras. But I am so proud of this collaboration that I want to start by showing you the Canon product page here. So this is where you find RC SK5, it's home on the internet and you can reach out to Canon's resellers to um, learn everything about pricing, ordering, etc. When you unbox and connect your RC SK5, it will look like this basically. No cameras has been added. And notice there's a single cable providing the data and the power for the unit. This is called PoE power over ethernet. That's really, really useful. And when you connect it to an ethernet network, you'll see its IP address pop up on the screen here. So I can visit that IP address from a web browser, from a computer on the same network. So this is what you see when you go to that IP address reactor. And that is the configuration engine inside the RC SK5. So in here, the thing we would do would be to simply click add to search for cameras on the network. And we'll use discovery in this case to look for cameras that we have on this network. And we see we find a CRN 100 camera on the network. So we can select this one. And by simply selecting, you'll see immediately it is connecting to the camera. There we go. And it appears on the camera selector. So I can now select the camera and it's the black one over here. So you'll see as I move the joystick, I'm also moving the camera around. Let's add more cameras. We have a CRN 700 here on the network. So if I click here, you'll see in the discovery that the CRN 700 is found. We also see the ERC 300 camera. We'll come back to that and how we can add many more cameras also manually, but let's just select this one. I can now select the CRN 700 on the camera selector on the product. Actually, if I want to change the naming labels, let me just quickly show you how that works. Let's say the CIN 700 is our main camera. I can type in main and immediately as I'm leaving this field, it is updated on the display. I can even reorder the camera. So if I just drag the cameras around, you see they are also swapping positions on the camera selector. So that was easy, right? All those things inside Reactor, the software that runs inside the RC SK5. Let's work with the camera. I can use the joystick to, of course, move this camera around. I can also adjust the speed of how quickly that happens. So notice that as I now did this, it will be even quicker moving into position over here where we have wonderful Skahoy logo configuration with a little uh, plant, some Star Wars figures and so on. Now, um, I do like to have a little more fine grain control. So I'll just reduce the speed again to like middle. But actually, this can be done as we go. So let's, for instance, use the zoom speed over here, that dial. If I now turn this, the handle full swing, you see that the zoom speed is actually adjustable here. That's very useful. I can also use the zoom rocker to do the same. And that is what I told you in the beginning. This controller is full of Skahoy technology, like our professional zoom rocker. You can operate with your left hand and you can adjust the speed using the speed dial right here. Same goes for focus. We have focus, focus speed. We have um, untouch autofocus. We have uh, autofocus enabled, disabled. Right now it's enabled, but I could easily disable it. We also have iris and auto iris enabled, disable on that knob as well. So now that we are here, I want to uh, basically just bring attention to what the how the controller is laid out. And as you can see, joystick zoom rocker for left and right hand, the speed dials are there. We had that focus and iris operation. And then we also have what is um, often found on PDC controllers, pedestal which is like the color tone of your blacks. And then we have gain, which is the color tone more generally in your picture of the, 
the highlights and so on. So that is white balance related, color um, balance related on the panel. And you see these knobs will actually bring you straight into a menu on the RCSK5 where you can adjust these. So in fact, this is not the only way you can do it. It's just broken out to always be available for you. The same is true for the white balance, for the red and the blue gain. You see those values can be adjusted here. And now that this menu is brought up, the menu is indicated here. It says white balance. That is like the, let me see, the fourth menu the or the, the set um, of configurations you can do. Uh, brings up this page and I can change between uh, the, the different modes. Actually, if I go all the way to auto mode, which we have right here, that would correspond to pushing that button. So this is like a shortcut to setting the auto mode inside of that one. And of course, now that you have brought it up, you can also adjust this on, on these two knobs. So some of these functions are actually bringing up the menu for you straight, uh, straight um, away. And the same is true for the uh, uh, Iris uh, auto setting. So let's just see, this is Iris auto and that's that's fine, that's what it is. So now if I'm moving this encoder here, you see that I'm able to actually adjust it. So now I'm just reducing the light intake on the lens of the CIN700. And that is also reflected up there in the display, so you can follow along on, on that one. Okay, I can do the same, basically turn off autofocus if I want, and then I can also pull focus on this. So you can see this is now uh, out of focus, obviously, and then I can also bring it back into focus using the encoder knob here. There we go. Okay, back to auto, just for safety of the whole thing. This also brings up the focus menu, which is on, let me see, the second page. So now introducing the menu for you, there are four pages. And as you press this button on the lower edge, it will cycle through. If I press it on the upper edge, it is going backwards. And if I press it on the sides, it does the same. But as you reach the end, page number four, it won't go any further. So this is four-way button functionality for you. And it is pretty useful in many cases where we have uh, features assigned to a key that allows us to use the edges in this way. The same is, is done for the camera selector and the preset selector. You see, we have presets one to five here. We'll get back to presets shortly. And as I'm pressing the sides of this button, I'm going forth and back. Very, very useful because when you get to like about 80, 100 presets and you want to go back, well, you can go all the way to the end, but you can also press the upper edge and it's going to roll over. Actually, that's the lower edge. It's going to roll over back to preset number one. So that's four-way buttons for you now. That's introduced. And then finally, I want to show you how this menu works. So the pages, as I now go to page number two, we find uh, other options for the menu. So. On page one, we have the home menu. By the way, you get that if you press the top of the joystick. So you always can get home where you have the shooting mode, which you can set to auto if you want. And you can set it back here to manual. Um, if you put things in, in full auto, you see there are a lot of symbols that indicate that these settings are not available to you. You can't change them. You can do whatever you want and these knobs won't happen or anything, nothing will happen basically. But if you go back to auto to manual shooting mode, then on the second page of exposure, you find such as auto iris, which is currently manual. We can also put that back in auto. That would be the same as pressing that button. And now iris is not adjustable like manually anymore. But if you put it back into auto, it is. And now you can use your, your dials uh, different places here to adjust the iris. Going on to exposure, we have gain mode. We have ND filters. We have white balance. We have... Um, and if you go in white balance, you, you'll find such as Kelvin degrees, which can now be set on this dial. We have the, the black menu. We have on the second page, black two, which is sharpness level, uh, black gamma level, point and range. We have focus menu, which is also what you get if you press that button. We have preset settings because Canon's cameras have wonderful preset settings. Very, very interesting. We have trace menu. We have pan tilt speed, which is essentially these settings that the knobs are carrying with them. So you can see what these are the focus speed, uh, which was set here in the middle. And then if we go to page two, we have pan tilt ramp, various exposure. Oh, we can just go through here. Um, various settings you can set here. Uh, like it gets more and more complex in a sense. The further down in the menu you get, you get to color matrix, very advanced color management, custom picture settings, image details, and finally system settings where you can uh, work with the, um, let me see if we can change these um, values. You, you just see the options that are available to us here uh, in this menu. Okay, so that's how the menu system works on the RC SK5. 
I think at this point it would be fair to just let you know that the RCSK5 is built on Skahoy technology. I've mentioned that a few times. If you don't know, Skahoy has PTC controllers, and if you go to darkroomskahoy.com, you find like our image gallery. There you can find all our controllers. You can scroll through these pages, see wonderful pictures of our controllers in top view. And if you basically search PTC, you see we have PTC Fly, which is kind of small, you know, smallest PTC controller we, we have with a physical joystick. We have a PTC Pro, very, very popular product. We have PTC View, which has color thumbnails, just like the Frameshot Pro has. And then we have PTC, which, which is the smallest PTC controller you can find in our repertoire. And then finally, we have PTC Extreme a little further down the list. Oh, by the way, we have RCP. So if you need the RCP form factor for color control of a professional PTC camera like uh, CIN700, that is available as well, but I wanted to show you the PTC Extreme. I must have missed it. But if we search here, PTC, just to filter a little bit, we should see it pop up right there. Sorry, I missed it on the first round through. So this is like our flagship PTC controller that has many of the same features that the RC SK5 has. The RC, uh, it has also features that this one doesn't. So many of these patterns that I'm showing you today is actually found on our controllers as well. I want to move on to show you about presets, how presets work. Um, basically, presets are positions that you can recall. So if you press and hold a key on the RC SK5, the preset that we're on right now is stored. And that means as I move into a different position with the camera, let's just do that, like this one, we can store it on number three, just press and hold, it turns green, it is recorded. Let's just zoom in now, let's do it as quick as we can on this right there. All right, let's just um, see if we can pull the focus to um, the little guy in the back. Yes, that's nice, okay. Wonderful, and we'll store that on preset number five. All right, so let's press number three, and we go to this preset. Number two, we go to this preset, and number five, we go to the preset with Yoda, including the focus. So which things are added to the preset is something you can set inside of Canon's um, UI for the camera. So on its IP address, you can access those pages and adjust them. The controller just stores and record presets on these buttons. And as you could see, there are multiple pages. I want to invite you to check out the Pro License because with the Pro License, you can actually utilize these displays to type in labels for the presets. You already felt that I was a little unsure if I should record the one or the other because I couldn't remember what I stored on two, three, and five. And also what Frameshot Pro does for you is giving you thumbnails. And that's in a different video, so hope to see you there because that's a really exciting way of utilizing the 100 presets that you have in the Canon cameras. Before we end the video, I would like to show you what you can do to add more cameras inside of Reactor. So in here, we can basically go into the Add menu and then you can also manually add cameras. So as I um, said, all Canon cameras that support the XC protocols are available. So that includes this list of eight cameras currently. And adding these cameras is super easy. You can basically just select them here in um, by, by this green button. So let's just add an X300 uh, and if I do that, uh, hold down shift at the same time. You can see I'm adding actually quite a lot of cameras. They are all unconnected at the moment. So you see, of course, I have only these two. Those cameras have not been assigned an IP address yet. So um, of course, the uh, the cool thing is when you use Discover devices, you can basically have this coming up straight away uh, and just select them there. It will set the IP address for you. That's super nice. But you can also add cameras you have not connected to your network just yet to prepare everything. And this gives me a chance to show you the camera selector because now the camera selector actually has three pages you can go through. So once again, as I'm pressing the lower edge, I'm basically cycling. If I press the sides, I go forth and back between those three automatically created pages with cameras on. So that's really nice. And then the other thing I, I wanted to show you is the configuration you can do inside the RCSK5. On this page, you can select a section called Canon XC Camera Adjustments. And in here, you find this, the 20 sets of settings that you can change. Right now, we're on the focus page. If I go to um, the PT ramp, you see that page is now selected here. So I can actually also change around by just using the 
menu inside of here and I can zoom in on these. Now I'm able to change what is on these encoders. So in, if on preset page here, I would like something else than store mode, I can simply click this button and then I can change the parameter over here. It's also possible for me to add new pages. I can also delete pages. So let's say that we don't need this one. Let's say you want to scale this down to be even simpler for the users. They, they might actually not need to go into the menu. So why not just remove the, the options that you don't like? So we could delete these pages and then you can change other pages. So you see, as I'm doing this, I'm actually changing the configuration of menu. I'm almost bringing it down to three pages. So let me just add a, or remove a few other things. And now we are actually back to a three page menu, right? And then Again, as I said, you can go into each one of these and click, and then you can change the behavior, the, the uh, parameters that are assigned to these. It's too much to go into full details in this video, but I wanted you to see how easy it is to actually address those settings in the menu from inside Reactor using the configuration tab. We have simulation. Simulation basically means that I can navigate the camera using the buttons in here. So I could actually select cameras remotely from the web UI. And then in packages, we have packages you can install. There is basically not much you can install because this is limited to only Canon cameras and those few applications necessary to run this. But you can use the pro license to unlock to install everything. And then on the settings page, you can set IP address and Wi Fi settings and see the logs and get support features enabled and so forth. So that is how Reactor works the software that runs straight out of the RCSK5. Thanks for watching this video. The RCSK5 can be purchased through your Canon dealers. The Frameshot Pro and the RCSK5 Pro licenses can be purchased directly from Skahoy. We have put links up for the Canon product page, the manual, Frameshot Pro, and the Pro license pages into the description of this video. Please like and subscribe, follow us on social media, and watch out for other videos about Frameshot Pro and the upgrade license for RCSK5.